Sunday. Uh, hope you hope you're really enjoying weather. We're in the Carolinas, so we're in Charlotte, and it is a beautiful day out. So you might be able to hear birds in the background. I hope you do actually, because it is super sunny and super nice out. So we're going to keep you in here for half an hour, and then we're going to get outside. So we're already outside. This is our workshop. My name is Demi. If you don't already know me, this is my daughter Maisie. She turned 16 this week, so she's uh, super excited to be on camera. Uh, just because we're going to make her birthday present that she kind of knew about, kind of didn't this morning because it was an extra credit project thanks to this DIY pallet garden. So I'm going to show you that afterwards, but uh, this was where we started. So if you can look down, we started with two really, one was actually pretty decent. You can actually buy uh, pallets from Lowe's. I think they're around $8 or you can go ask around. Uh, so they actually have stacks of them that you can purchase, take to the front, or have curbside delivery. So during COVID-19, please, please, please use curbside delivery. Lowe's is huge about that. They will even load your car. So you can order everything online, click a uh, store near you, and all you have to do is go pick it up. So for that social distancing, uh, you can still be ordering things online and get curbside or load to your car pickup. So you could always order those pallets and get them loaded into your car. So theirs are more new. Uh, if you go and purchase them. I actually had two friends donate theirs that were just happened to be from projects in their backyards uh, or in their garages. They were doing remodels. So things like pallets of tile come and get delivered for remodelers. So you might be able to ask friends or even go to, uh, right now we're not going anywhere, so I need to really catch if you don't want to go to a grocery store right now, but that's an easy ask normally is to, in their delivery area, say, hey, I'll take any extra pallets you have. So there is right now, the simple solution is to order it online and go pick it up, have it loaded into your car at your local loads for social distancing. So that's my public service announcement is social distancing. Okay, so what I did was I have two different versions here to show you because the ones that are junkier are really hard to work with. So when you, some of these have been used for a long, long time. So these have already been cut down. I used uh, two things. So here's what I would recommend. If you don't already have a circular saw that is one that is mobile, I have my circular saw that is my table saw. And then we also have, uh, so this is a compound miter saw. And then there's also a table saw in the back. Um, it, very hard to do when you're cutting down something like a pallet versus a long piece of wood to do that without just a circular saw. In a pinch, I actually started on, on this junky piece of wood, which is very hard to cut through, which is why I say be careful with the junky pieces of wood. I actually used my jigsaw. So that was this morning. I about jigsawed my arm off, meaning like just power. So that's why I say I wouldn't really recommend it, especially for these old ones. I did it two nights so we could prep up our really nice one and that was super simple so the newer the wood the easier it is to work with and then it also as you can see this is the old one i had to scrap the rest of it because it literally fell apart i mean i don't know how old this thing is but it even has the old grooves which the newer ones don't have these they actually make really phenomenal shelves and that's why i made one into this is the other half of this oh no the other half of that is this one the other half of this one is in the trash can, but uh, the grooves are pretty cool to make shelves if you do find one that's sturdy enough. So I was able to make the bottom piece. It's sturdy enough. It had some rickety nails in here that I had to make sure that I nailed in. I definitely go down and uh, uh, sand this really well, if, especially if there's going to be anybody reaching in and pulling anything off. But I want to put, uh, I want to put uh, uh, some hooks on the front and make it into an operable shelf. So if these older ones can do that, I'm going to spray paint it. So I'm just going to show you because our Builder Girls Club loves uh, spray paint, especially if it is brighter, the better or neon. So I'll show you that paint that we've been using, but that's the old one. What you're going to do is put a base on any of this. So especially these old ones, instead of, you know, you'll see tutorials online. You can always pry these off with either a crowbar or a flat, a very strong flat Phillips head screwdriver. This one literally would have fallen to pieces if I had done that, where you can pop off one piece to use as your bottom piece. I just had plywood that I was able to cut down, or again, Lowe's can cut this down for you, no problem. There are huge wood sheets that they can make in sections that are as cheap as $12. So you, you have probably five or six projects out of something like that, that you can see my wood stacks, which we'll save you from. Um, we have all kinds of extra wood that we can make in other projects. So pretty economical here, but 
I'm going to show you one that's further along here because what happens is after you cut down this wood, so this pallet back here, this was a huge pallet, so I don't know, this was at least five feet long that we had donated. So I cut, again with my jig, I should have used my circular saw on that, that's mobile. I cut down these three sections and what I've done is I've gone ahead and I measured out my wood for my base. So instead of popping off, I decided to use some of my scrap wood that I had that was one by four. Uh, it's actually one, one by 10 by 12, I think was what it was. Super long um, that I just cut down. So again, you can measure down based on these pallets. These pallets are around three feet wide uh, and easily measured down. You can see I'm not even perfect here. And I wanna go ahead and I've stained this. So a couple of things. This is phenomenal on stain. Stain loves this wood and wood loves the stain. It sucks it up so you need a decent amount of stain. I went through probably a quarter of a can of the Minwax. So the Minwax wood finish here. I did espresso because that's what I'm in love with right now. I'm not normally a stain lover, uh, but these dark colors that they have, and then also they have a vintage blue. So I'll show you that with Maisie's project in a minute. But so what we've done here is a couple things. You wanna, after you cut it, go ahead and stain it or paint it whatever color. So I'll show you that spray paint technique in a minute. And then you're going to attach your base. So super simple stuff and I need Maisie for you to help me. And I still have a little bit of tackiness on my stain. Can you do me a favor and hold in the middle? So once you have your wood that's been cut down, I have already drilled so you're gonna pre-drill your holes. Super simple stuff here. Excuse me. Can you hold on the end for me? On the end. Oh. The end. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so pre-drill your holes. Here I've used, I think this is an eighth inch bit. Uh, can't say enough, huge investment that is worth your while, which is around $20. IPS, another public service announcement, I want every girl and woman in the world to have a drill and a power driver on their Christmas list. Uh, it is the most phenomenal two things you could own because you can do so much with them. Just getting into this world of shop, class, and for yourself and kind of DIY and getting into introducing to girls uh, or kids in general at, from age nine and up, these are great foundational elements to have. I also have a whole bit kit, so I can be flipping out my bits anytime. And I've done that a couple of times with the project, but I'll save you from the actual um, uh, showing flipping out because I have about six drills. So I am using, sorry, I'm moving around on my poor cameraman. I'm using what's basically called deck screws. So these are two and a half inches. I have, or two and a quarter inches. I have pretty long wood. So what you're always gonna wanna do is make sure you know how uh, wide what you are drilling in or what you're driving in with your power driver. So I don't know why I'm still holding my drill. This is for pre-drilling holes is with your drill. We're not using gloves right now. We should be. I have a habit of not using gloves when I start drilling and driving um, just for the sheer fact that uh, I like to have the dexterity of my hands, but we're working with and maybe really not happy. <laughs> we're working with some stuff that could have uh, we've sanded this one down, but it could have some knotty edges that you want to stick around, stick away from. So, make sure my bits fit. I've got the right one in. I'm going to drive that in. I've already gone ahead and done the other two so that I don't bore you to oblivion with my drilling. Maisie's going to hold that nice and steady. This one is having a tough go. means that I need to pre-drill that. This is old wood, remember? So when you pre-drill, you really need to go deep in there. As far as you can. Unless I have stripped this bit. Which I don't think we have, so. Wasn't pretty on that one, but again, I'm working with some super old gross wood here. Um, so when you're working with pallet wood, it's just, it's kind of, you, you work with what you got. But again, when you got stuff donated, it's pretty good too. So now all three of these are in, have got that taken care of. 
I have gone ahead, here Mace, we're gonna flip this over, so I'm gonna go towards you. I've gone ahead and I've already done that on the bottom of the top piece here. Right, I'm gonna go all the way over. So you hold there. And what I've done, so I've already attached the bottom on the very bottom, and then I've also made it with this one as well, this top segment. So what I use here, so all this was pre-painted before I do anything with potting soil. I used Rust-Oleum's Chalked. There's a whole line of these in, at a variety of different stores, but this is what uh, Lowe's was carrying. They have all different colors. I used white because we did this project with our Builder Girls Club a couple months ago of doing planter boxes, and they wanted to write what they were in chalk, what they were uh, creating. So this is chalked, and then we also had, these are called Chocola, super duper cool, especially for girls because they love all these colors. Uh, this is what we've already used. I've gone ahead and notated which ones that I've picked out at Lowe's, so out of my pocket. I've got our packets of seeds. Now, you could actually go ahead and plant if you wanted to. You could do succulents here if you wanted to do that as well. I mean, the sky's the limit on the possibilities of these projects. You could do all kinds of fun stuff. But I really love these Chocolas. These are available online, uh, so online retailers will ship this to your home. Uh, Chocola is really super cool, especially for kids, again, because it's I could erase this off, but it's a marker, so it's a lot easier to use than chalk. So, I have gone ahead and painted this. I painted it this morning, sorry, but it, it feels like it's dry already, so I can, I can feel pretty confident, but I would let this dry overnight, especially stain. Stain needs a good day to dry, or at least a nice overnight cycle for you to be able to work with it. And then this chalk paint on this kind of wood, again, it's very porous, so it sucks it in, so it dries faster than you know drywall or something indoors. So, already done that, so what we are going to do next, you can see I put cilantro, parsley, peppermint, and then what is our last one? We'll go ahead and label that. We've got parsley, cilantro, peppermint, oh, we have basil, so can you hold these and put them in your pocket? So we'll use our pink marker, and I'll do the basil really quick. So, it's just like those paint pen markers, really. So, really, you just, you know, imprint, indent, and it dries almost immediately. And I'm just doing it freehand and fun. You could do stencils on this. There are so many stencils out there. I know on Etsy and at different stores, craft stores, that you could find fun stuff. So that's me freehand, whatever. It takes all of like two seconds. Your kids can have fun with that. You can have fun with it. And then after you're finished with Whatever you've grown one season, you can switch it out, erase it, and grow something else. So, taking it next level, we are going to, do, especially if you're using any kind of paint, um, we caveat with this that you need to put plastic in, even if you're just doing pressure treated lumber, uh, you, and you're growing something, especially if you're going to eat it, um, you definitely want to protect the food or the plant from uh, getting any kind of that chemical seeping in. So these are pretty large trash bags. They're just our recycle bags. I'm, I'm working with this. Actually, I think I'm gonna cut this down, to tell you the truth. So you could probably use the ones that are from uh, just picking up groceries, the plastic bags that I think any of us that are environmentally friendly are just not fans of. Mace, can you hold that like that for me? So I can cut on this side. Cut go over here. There you go. So have a helper, and I'm just going to do this really on the fly so that you can see, but super simple. I'll use this as a drop cloth, so we're big fans of adaptive reuse and not throwing anything away. Uh, hopefully that doesn't mean hoarding, but when it comes to having a shop and having girls around, you pretty much find use for anything and everything in your project. So we are going to, you want to go ahead and put on your glove. We've got our garden over here super simple stuff yep you can do it and then in I love to use these buckets what we're using today is seed starting potting mix this is like five dollars right now again you can get this curbside loaded into your car don't go into the garden center right now but uh, use that as 
is, since I'm just doing seeds, if you had something that was actually rooted and growing, you could use a different kind of potting soil, but I wanted to make sure that we gave our, our little seedlings the best chance to survive. So Maisie's gonna go ahead and you're gonna fill this first one for us. Right in the plastic. And really what we should have in here is some rocks um, just for drainage. So if you get a little bag of rocks, it's always helpful as well. Then we can hide this plastic. But again, just up until, okay, nice. and dirt is messy. This is fun for kids. They love dirt. They love to work with their hands. So you know what? This is why your paint should be dry, which thankfully mine is. And you're going to fill that up about three quarters of the way, especially if you have seeds. This one's going outside. You can always make this for indoor use. Again, I'd sand it down. I'd make it a little more finished and polished personally. It's up to you what your final, final say is on what your finished project is. All right, one more handful. There you have it. All right, so this one is basil. And so I'll show you the basil, but that's really simple stuff. And I've got four trash bags. Again, I think after doing my first one, I'll use a smaller trash bag that I can cut. So even again, one of those plastic trash bags, uh, or excuse me, uh, takeout bags from food, et cetera, that you could reuse. Many times those aren't recycled in your area. So easy, because this is such a small, if you had a longer piece that didn't have, some of these pallets have this middle, uh, middle column so when they don't it's a longer piece and I would use a bigger you know like a black trash bag for for that so there we go perfect can I have the basil please those are in your pocket keep rid of the seeds always have an apron kids love them these are like two dollars and they get to decorate them. Ours are very sadly decorated just with our names because we use those at camp for our name tags Girls love these as well because they really feel like builders. I'm just going to follow the directions. We'll plant these little guys and gals in here for our basil. And then we would water those, get them started. And that's a fun project for the kids. So they get to watch that grow. I would put it again. These are full sun. So I've chosen four that are full sun so I can put that right on our back porch that, or if we were at the workshop, we would put that in a full sun location that the girls could watch grow. So you can germinate this. This is even scientific method. We have a camp that we partner with Dottie Rose Foundation on called Farm to Construction Code, where we would actually uh, have a scientific method where they're germinating their seeds and watching those online and growing. So you can always make this a million fun projects with kids of many ages, not just young kids, but this is a lot of fun. You could also use, I mean, this is a multi-purpose thing. I love pallets because if you can get one that would, uh, then uh, you could make these, these would be cool for Legos. You can attach this to a wall, again, making sure it's really anchored um, for kids and have three of these shelves and rip out the one in the middle. Uh, again, I use this super big. These pallets come in different sizes, so it's a little tougher to show you exact dimensions because whatever you get is most likely gonna be a little bit different than what I'm showing you here. Uh, and I just showed you two different types of wood. Both of mine had all three of the columns in the center. Uh, some of the newer ones don't have this middle one, which makes it actually a little easier to work with. But so this is it. I, I don't know, I mean, all in with this project. I had a lot of these because I have a workshop uh, for girls, but I think the markers online were, it's a set of 15 of them and they were like $10. The chalk paint, which I'll use for multiple, around $8. I had to get a bigger uh, can of the Minwax stain just because I knew I was doing multiple projects with that as well. That's $7.99 at Lowe's. And I already had my drills and I already had my scrap wood for the base. So. If you were starting from scratch, you could do multiples of these, probably at least six pallet projects for around $35, which is pretty great, especially if you're doing gifts. Mother's Day is coming up. This would be an awesome project to do with mom. Uh, if you are at social distancing with your mother or your grandmother. So I'm going to move this to the side.
like because that's actually our finished project. We'll finish that up and show you the final one. Uh, again, I wanted to show you this one just really quickly because it is just, no offense y'all, this is super ratty wood. I mean, I don't know how old this thing is. It's at least 50 years old just because I see how rusted up the nails are. If it's any younger than that, oh my goodness, it, it got its use for its life. Uh, it's almost an antique. And I'm really kind of taking a chance on painting this. It would be pretty cool rustic. I mean, again, you need to sand it down. You need to make it a little cleaner. Uh, I just wanted to show you that you can spray paint literally anything. And all of our girls in Builder Girls Club, if you're watching, they adore spray paint. So spray paint is your friend. Uh, I am not doing this in the best location for spray paint. All I'm going to do, uh, actually, I'm going to move this out of the way too, just because this fumes and everything else. I do have my garage door open right now. The ideal location to do that in is going to be outside. Uh, so we are big fans of spray painting. This is my N95 mask that I've had forever. So I don't want people to think I'm just walking around hoarding masks. Maze, do you want to get out of the way just so you don't pull in these fumes? Yes. And so you're always going to want to use a mask when you're painting. Times like these, uh, since I look a little ridiculous with this right now, times like these, uh, you can use a buff, so a t-shirt or a buff. And I'm just gonna show you one coat. Again. This one's gonna take a lot of coats, I can already tell. And we'll show you our final project just because this is such old wood and it's really, really not the best quality. It has lived a life for sure. But so there you go. You can see, again, how it's going to pick it up. If you're going to take a really old piece of wood and want to do something with it with paint, just you're committed. I will tell you that. So it's going to take you probably a whole can of this. These cans of paint are, you know, the, the really cool high viz, which is used for highway uh, landscaping, etc. The, the spray painted neons, uh, the orange, yellow, and pinks are usually a little bit more. Those are around $4 a can, but your typical, this is a paint and primer Krylon, actually. So this isn't even high viz. This is just a, a gloss citrus green, which is super cool, and kids love it. So this one was the same, it was around $4 a uh, can. So just commit that you're probably gonna need a can, if not two, if you've got super old wood, even if you sand it down a lot. So anyway, we'll show you how that one shapes up. That was salvaged because the rest of it just literally fell apart on me when I was taking it apart. Okay, let's get to the super fun stuff of the extra project. So if you end up finding one of, and you don't have to follow me, I'm just gonna pick this up real quick. You end up finding a big palette, which I was lucky enough to get thanks to friends who are doing remodeling projects. So not only did I get this project out of it, so I got our herb palette garden. I also got Maisie's project. So she does a lot with her hair. She's got curly hair, as you can see, and she's got a lot of products. She's got a lot of hair ties. She does cross country. So she is actively engaged. So if you want to come a little bit closer, I'm going to show you what we did here. So same thing. We just drilled a base. Let me make sure that I've got all my, I do. So I've got all of my uh, screws in. I could actually do a third. You know what, Maisie, will you hold that for me? Don't put your back to the camera for me. All right, so I got one more. I've already pre-drilled this middle section. Just to be sure, this one, I need you hold that. You got it? Got it. So. I'm going to put in my last one just because I know she's going to have some stuff on this. She's going to have some heavy stuff in there and we're done. So again, this is my driver, which comes with a bunch of bits. Drill. I have plenty of these because normally we have these. This is one of the first things we do with our Builder Girls Club, which is middle school girls, is introduce them to drill, what we call hammer and drill skills. So hammer and nail, and then also drills and drivers, which is just the fundamentals of a shop. And you can do so many projects just off of that. And then we'll get into jigsaws, which are fun, and table saws and things of that nature. But really start out with the drill and the driver. If you're going to do nothing else investment-wise, those are such great investments uh, for your garage, for your kids, uh, to do projects with them. So don't just buy another public service announcement. Don't just buy a drill and then walk away from your nine-year-old. We would never, ever advocate that. But it's good to learn together. So anyway, Maisie's gotten really good at a drill, right? 
feel like a pro. <laughs> but she does really well. She helps us out with our camp. So anyway, okay, we're going to flip this thing back over. You see, I left it like super scrunchy on the back because she's going to put this on the wall. So again, look at this stain. I, I got it. Now I'm, I've become a stain aficionado. So apparently I love stain. So this is, can you grab me the blue can? I'll show you the Minwax. I just happen to be buying the other stain saying, okay, we're gonna do some more espresso and ebony. So we'll go from there. And then I saw these colors. Oh my gosh, like this isn't supposed to be an advertisement today, but I love it. So this came in like five or six different colors and it's all this vintage line. So uh, this is called Vintage Blue, 288 Vintage Blue. So this, this is again, like not the best quality wood to you know bring out the beauty of a stain, but you like this color, right? You, she really loves blue. So I, when I saw it, I knew like I gotta get something blue for some project. Again, $8 a can, and I might have used a quarter of the can, if, if not an eighth of the can, so I have plenty to do with other projects. And uh, just super, I think it makes it super original. I love really original stuff. All right, so this was the other side. So I got two projects out of one pack. Uh, made this into, and I bought these two when I was uh, online shopping at Lowe's. These are just pulls from the kitchen cabinet pull section. So I think this one was $2 and this super cool, uh, this is where she'll hang her hair ties. This super cool knob was, it's a decorative knob, so maybe $3 I think all in. And then these are just hex bolts. So all I've done here is pre-drill. So I pre-drilled in a hole with, uh, where is one of my other drills? Sorry, I got like eight drills going on right here. So I think this is, a, this is a quarter inch bit. So again, with that bit kit, I can flip out my bits and do all kinds of different projects. So I had these extra hex bolts from our DIY wooden robots. And all I did, because these are extra, she could hang all kinds of things on this. More hair stuff, um, small, lightweight things, hair ties, whatever. Kids could be hanging all kinds of different things on this that are tchotchkes that are theirs. So I went ahead and pre-drilled my hole and all I'm gonna do is screw that in. So whatever size you use, you just wanna make sure that you match up your uh, drill, uh, your drill bit to make sure that it accommodates for whatever that you're, you're putting in there. So I make sure it's really in there nice and neat. That's not gonna move on me. So now she has nine extra uh, opportunities to hang more stuff, which if you've ever met a teenager or 12 year old girl and above, they love stuff to be hung all over the place. So this could also be a, kind of a school board as well. You could just hang this with all kinds of different hex bolts and they could just put, it, it's almost like a pegboard, right? Or you could do magnets, you could do the magnetized paint. I mean, there's so many different things you could do. So I've done that, you know, kept it simple this morning. I went a little crazy. I'll show you how to do these really quick. I've already pre-drilled for my knob and then I have it over here. All I have is Phillips head screwdriver. So these are simple projects to do if you ever want to do things with kitchen knobs. Uh, so they come so that if this really was a kitchen or a bathroom cabinet, those are going to screw together. I use the short one. They usually come with a short and a long uh, bolt to go with it. Literally just going to screw this on. So I'll start. You hold that for me for a second. I'm gonna start with my hand just to make sure that it gets on here and then I'm gonna finish with my flat, or excuse me, a Phillips head screwdriver just to make it nice and tight there. Actually, you know what, I don't even need that. That's not I needed it. So sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. That's all there nice and tight. My nice dirty hands are making that lovely, that dull up a bit. Here, I'll show you this one too. Super simple stuff. For this, this was just one of those hooks that's like $3. Same section where all the knobs are already comes with the screws. You just want to make sure, again, if you're putting this in wood uh, rather than just drywall in a stud in your house, you want to make sure that your screw obviously goes all the way through. So here is a way of uh, fake it to make it. This is like a 7 18th drill bit, I think, on this one because I, I needed to go lighter because this is a much smaller hole making sure I fit that through there. I'm gonna eyeball this, so some people are gonna hate me, but I eyeball a lot. I'm not as much of a, uh, especially if I know it's something that's in the center, I'm not gonna measure that. But clearly I could get my measuring tape out, get my pencil, my construction pencil, and measure this. This is not an exact project to me, so I'm not as worried about it. So pretty simple, I'm lining that right underneath. And 
all I'm doing is making sure I lined up my holes and now I can go in and do them for real. gets fun is when you're hanging a bunch of stuff. This can go really, really fast. So I've already matched up. This is a Phillips head bit that I actually attached in because that's what we're using today. I'm gonna line this up. Making sure the bottom as well is lined up. This would probably be much easier to do if I was lying this project down. So I'm sure I will get feedback about that as well. But for camera purposes, I'm showing you this sitting up as opposed to lying flat on a work table. There you go. So she's got a finished shelf right here. You know, not perfect. Again, I could have measured that up and made it super exact and right angle, etc. And so now she is going to use that. Do you want to paint your name on that later? Um, <laughs> Super excited. Welcome to 16. So she'll figure that out. If she wants to paint her name on there with our chalk paint painter, great. But other than that, what do you think? Pretty cool shelf? Yeah. So again, this is super multifunctional. She could use that for hair stuff, which is kind of what she has. Uh, selfishly, she's got it all in my bathroom, so this was kind of a selfish project because A, it's a birthday project that's original, but B, it can get out of my bathroom. So you always want to do something, mom, if you're out there, or dad's out there uh, doing something that gets a little bit back for you. But anyway, so super easy. Like I said, I just got a little creative with the painting here at the bottom. This is that vintage stain, and then I did the chalk paint at the bottom just in case she wanted to write anything. I could have stained the whole thing. I could have spray painted the whole thing. So that's two projects for you. And all in all, uh, with our supplies, again, I'm making probably six or seven out of everything that I did. So it's probably $10 to $12 per. And that's if you get the, the wood donated, which is pretty prevalent out there. And if you need any tips or tricks of how to uh, find those pallets, then let me know. Otherwise, easy stuff. So enjoy your Sunday today. Get outside, go do projects and things that are fun, social distance. If you are actually going to order any of these items and you do that from Lowe's, again, take advantage of the wonderful curbside ser service and loading services they have for you for social distancing. And go explore, be creative, and have fun. We'll see you next time.